Okay, um, so my name is Daniel Beranger. Um, I'm a developer at Red Hat, mostly working on virtualization technology. But I'm here today to talk to you about um, my project in my free time, which is Entangle. And this is an application for tethered camera control and capture. And it's targeting digital cameras, so not those kind of cameras you see up there. Cameras, cameras like this. Um, an SLR from Nikon or Canon is um, the best supported. So what is it? It's, um, it's a desktop application written uh, in GTK, GTK3. Um, and being a photography application, is a, it is of course uh, color managed. Um, we use the uh, LCMS2 library for dealing with this and uh, automatically pick up the uh, system monitor profile. On the back end, we use the LibG Photo library for controlling the cameras. Um, this this library has been around quite a long time. Um, most commonly used for people just downloading files off their cameras. Um, but for most modern digital SLR cameras, you can actually um, control all aspects of the camera's operation using this library. So change, change any setting on the camera, trigger the shutter, um, turn on and off um, live view mode if your camera has that, um, and so forth. And we also use the GXIV2 uh, library for extracting metadata from the images we download, which is um, it's the same library that GIMP now uses for metadata. Um, and of course, this being the Libre Graphics conference, it shouldn't be any surprise that this is an um, open source GPL licensed project. So I want to talk to you a little bit about why I started development on this application. Um, in London, I'm, I'm a member of a, a local photography group, and they do a lot of workshops. And one of the workshops we did a few years ago now um, was um, off-camera flash workshop. And um, in that workshop, they were using the Nikon um, camera control software um, so that we could see the shots that were being taken as, as he was taking them on, on the big projector. And I thought, that's, that's kind of a neat piece of software. I wonder if there's anything equivalent for Linux. Um, and after a little searching around, I found the LibG Photo library. Um, and there was a, an old um, graphical interface for that, but it, I couldn't get it to compile anymore, and it was basically unmaintained. So I thought I'd, I thought I'd go about creating the Entangle application to provide a graphical front end for the LibG Photo library. Um, one of the, the very first things that I used it for was macro photography. Um, if, you're, if you've ever done any kind of macro photography, you'll know that um, getting focus right is one of the hardest, hardest things there. Uh, particularly if you're looking on the back of your little LCD screen, it may look perfectly sharp, but then you bring it onto your computer later and you're in for a whole pile of disappointment when you see how fuzzy it really is. Um, so this, this was really the first thing that I, I used this application for. Um, and I should say, in case you haven't already figured out, this image here was processed using GMIC and their Dream Smooth plugin, which I just did that just after their presentation. I thought it was kind of neat. Um, so the other thing I'm more recently interested in is, is astrophotography. And again, with astrophotography, getting focus right is one of the hardest things. Um, not only because the LCD screen on the back of your camera is very small, but when your camera is attached to the back of a telescope, the LCD screen is in a position which makes it almost impossible for you to actually look at it. Um, so being able to see your images that you're capturing on a, on a laptop screen as you take them is, is very handy for getting, for getting focus right. Um, and uh, the use case, which kind of uh, I wasn't expecting when I started the project, um, is stop motion animation. Um, a bunch of a bunch of users have shown up and, and told me that they're using using Entangle for stop motion animation, and uh, suggested a bunch of features to improve it, 
in this respect to make it uh, make it make it a better program for doing stop motion animation, um, and I'll hopefully demonstrate a few of those those features in a in a few minutes' time. Um, in fact, I'm going to demonstrate them now. <laughs> um, let me find my mouse pointer again. There it is. Um, so, as I, as I said, this is this is mostly targeted at digital SLR cameras. It works with Nikon and Canon cameras primarily. Um, I'm sorry, that's. Uh, I should make it so that I should make it so that you can see it, not me. <laughs> Um, yeah, like I said, primarily digital SLR cameras, though it does work with some of the older Canon compact um, cameras, the power shots, but uh, Canon in their infinite wisdom decided they didn't want you doing remote control of their compact cameras, so they crippled the firmware in all, in all modern compact cameras from Canon, which was uh, not very nice of them. Um, so um, if we just turn this on, and um, actually, I shouldn't have gone full screen immediately. I should uh, connect to the camera. If if you uh, if the camera is already turned on when you start the program up, it'll automatically connect to it um, and offer to unmount it if you've got it set up as a file system. Um, so now you can see down the down the sidebar there, it's got a panel with uh, various settings for the camera. Um, Depending on what camera you have, depends on how many settings you'll you'll get here. But there's uh, on modern Nikon and Canons, there's uh, there's a lot of settings. Um, so this area of the user interface needs a bit of work. I know that. Currently, I just took the easy approach of exposing everything, but that that will be changing. <laughs> um, so if we just take uh, a photo, it should automatically download it. Or, uh, or not. Ah, the curse of the live demo, eh? The, there's a scroll bar in the bottom that's like uh, in the middle. Yeah. It needs to be at the end. No, no, no. It's uh, it's it's there. Um, okay. Let's just uh, disconnect and uh, connect again. That usually fixes these things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, maybe this is this is, uh, this is one of the uh, the issues I have with libg photo is that uh, some of the some of the drivers can be unreliable. I mean, I shouldn't actually blame libg photo. I don't ne don't necessarily know that it's their fault. It could be the camera firmware just as just as easily. Um, Let's, let's try that again. That's more like it. So you can see it actually, um, it downloaded two images there. Because um, I have it set in RAW and JPEG combined mode, so it will download both the, both the formats. Uh, and it loads the RAW file. Um, I said you have a live preview mode. Um, so we've got that here at uh, a couple of frames a second at least. Um, and you can uh, you can focus in and out um, when you're previewing. So it's, it's, you're not going to be able to see that really on the on the big display there. And uh, once you're happy with how you set up the shot, um, capture the image and uh, download it. Um, one of the one of the things that I mentioned uh, that we added for the, the stop motion guys is uh, they wanted to be able to do aspect ratio masks. Um, so you can see there, I just turned on black bars at the top and the bottom. Um, we've got a whole bunch of different aspect ratios that we know about. Um, so you can set up, set it up to mask different areas of the screen. Um, and you see it's got a focus point, and this is showing rule of thirds lines. It can do, it can do different uh, divisions on the on the image as well. So if we just get out of that. Um, yeah, there's, there's probably there's, there's a bunch of other things. Um, 
you can have, if you, you want to control multiple cameras, you can set up, you can open, open a separate window and then tell it to synchronize the capture. Um, so that when you um, trigger the shutter on one camera, it'll, it'll capture on both cameras and download from both cameras at once. Um, so I think I'll, that's enough, enough of a quick demo. I'll just go back to the presentation for the last few minutes because uh, we're quickly running out of time. Uh. So this is the bit where I ask for um, your help. Um, I mentioned already this one of the one of the problems I have is a bit of a driver quality problem in libg photo um, but this manifests itself in in various different ways um, some things which you think would operate the same way on different cameras just work completely differently so for example I, I set up um, support for focusing during live view which worked perfectly on my Nikon camera and the very first Canon user who tried this found that it didn't work at all so that's 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 one um, big problem that I have um, regressions in functionality um, often when they're making fixes to um, things in libg photo other things will break um, which is kind of unfortunate it's not really the testing the testing in the libg photo library is is fairly manual there's not a hell of a lot of automated testing there if if any um, that i've found so any, anyone wanting to help in libg photo would be um, much appreciated um, just having people testing different cameras and telling me what works and what doesn't work would be would be great because um, I've got two Nikon cameras um, and a bunch of old Canon compact cameras but I don't have a Canon SLR camera myself yet although I'll probably end up buying one um, when I when I decide to um, fork out the cash um, I need a new logo. When I first started the project, I wasn't really paying attention, and I picked a logo which looked remarkably similar to Digicam's logo. Um, and they've been around a long time, so I don't really want to have one that looks too similar to theirs. So I've got to, got to get a new logo. So if anyone is a graphic designer who fancies designing logos, then um, I'd appreciate any, any help in that area. <coughs> Um, I already mentioned the interface design needs a little bit of help, um, a bit of improvement, um, particularly on the on the panel for um, adjusting the camera controls. Um, that clearly doesn't work very well when you've got lots and lots of controls there. Um, this isn't so much a problem as, as um, something I'd like to do um, as, as features. Um, when you've got the ability to control the shutter, it'd be nice to be able to do some automation of that. Um, to, for example, take a bunch of images with different focus points, and then you can do focus stacking for macro work. Or for astrophotography, you can um, set it up to do time lapse over um, several hours, so you don't have to sit there pressing the shutter button every, every couple of minutes. Um, it's been mentioned several times during the day, 1% um, of Windows user base is larger than 95% of Linux, so it would be nice to have, a, have this work on Windows. Um, the main blocker here at the moment is getting libg photo to work on Windows because it doesn't even compile currently. Um, and that's all I wanted to talk about today. Um, so thanks for your attention, and if you're at all interested, go to the website or come and find me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, questions? Yes, in the back. And I have a camera, uh, I have a microphone, not a camera. Thank you. Uh, hi, um, I'm, I'm uh, an astrophotographer myself also, and um, I use extensively Magic Lantern because it rocks and it helps a lot during night and everything. And I'd love to use it in combination with Entangle. So, any plans on that, or how can we help towards that direction? You mentioned you don't have a Canon right now, so you cannot yeah. test it yourself. But have so, you, yeah. I mean, the, ca the modern Canon digital SLRs they they um, support the PTP mode, which is what which is what G Photo is relying on to talk to the cameras. 
Um, so I mean, you, you can you can you can use this with normal um, Canon digital SLRs and. Uh, at least some of the functionality works because I've got Canon users who have told me that some of it works. Um, but I really just need more people to tell me what does and doesn't work and if you're able to do code development then jump in and fix things. And um, so I don't know particularly what functionality Magic Lantern would add that would be useful but I'm, I'm all ears for suggestions. Yeah, so probably this is a discussion to to be had in like in Friday Magic Lantern workshop because like if Magic Lantern can expose things on PTP, that would be a way to access them. If not, then there needs to be some code written specifically for the Magic Lantern operations on on Canon. Sure, sure. I'm happy to go along to that workshop. Yeah. More questions? We had. It was only you waving. Any more questions? Yes. And just when you mentioned astrophotography and uh, time-lapse photography, um, I was wondering whether you or any of the users have been uh, using this in combination with the OpenMoco, um, the uh, uh, open motion control software of uh, dynamic perceptions, um, motion control, open hardware. Is that something that anyone's done or is, is planning? Not, that, not, cool. that I've, uh, not that I'm aware of. What language is it written in? Um, it's it's written in C. Um, it uses um, it uses GTK and um, it's got uh, we 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 support the the G object introspection um, system so that you can write um, user interface extensions in um, JavaScript so you don't have to be a C programmer to to extend this. So I think that concludes a very intensive but exciting day. First day of Libra Graphics 2014. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.